and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, I wanted to wish you a happy new year. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, uh, my channel focuses specifically on Air Arcade uh, top tier battles. I do a couple of other uh, battle ratings as well, but um, I wanted to specifically create a video for all of those new players to War Thunder. If you're new to top tier, you're new to Jets in general, and you're playing Air Arcade, there probably aren't that many videos out there that exist. Uh, most of the player base migrates over to real battles uh, right away as I just, I guess they feel that there's just a better experience there. And um, while everyone has their opinion, I enjoy Air Arcade. It's uh, more casual for me. I can jump in and out of games quickly. Um, it is a little bit more chaotic, so I figured this video would help any of you who's getting started, um, some of it could possibly translate over to real battles. Uh, most of the videos that are out there on real battles focus on mechanics that are real battles, right? So the flight models are different. So if you were to fly real battles, the flight model for all your airplanes is going to feel a little different. Um, the way I can describe it to me is since it's more realistic, you're not going to be able to roll and pull up as and hard as fast. Uh, so everything just feels a little bit slowed down. Obviously, you're taking off from your airstrip, so there's a lot more time involved to actually get into the battle. Whereas in Air Arcade, you're right in, you're spawning in the air, and you're right away into the into the into the fight. So first things first, if you've been playing a little bit, you may have a little bit of an idea of the controls. We're going to go over the controls really, really quickly. Uh, it's critical that you have at least your basic controls mapped out and you're familiar with them. Otherwise, you're going to have an even worse time trying to stay alive. So if you go over the basic movement or your basic controls mode, you want to have, if you're using Air Arcade and you're using Mile Same for your flights, uh, you're going to have your keyboard for your primary control surfaces, so your throttle up and down uh, here. Typically the W, A, S, and D keys are, I think, default when they start out, and you can kind of adjust some of them. Um, I use uh, my throttle axis for my W and S, so full afterburner is holding the W key down. You can actually change that if you want to toggle it. There is a toggle control for uh, your afterburner if you wanted. Um, S is to slow it down. In addition, I've binded my countermeasures key to my S. Uh, the reason why I've done this is if you're using your afterburner full on and you're firing your flares and chaff, a missile is going to go to the hottest point. So if you fire a trail of flares, you're going to lead the missile directly to your exhaust, which is your afterburner, and it's not going to help you. So you do need to cut your afterburner if you're going to try to fire off countermeasures, hence why I've bind it to um, my S key, and I'll show that in a minute. You're rolling left and right are your A and D keys. For, for me, it's A and D. Um, pitching up, I use my mouse button. I have a multi-button mouse, so I have two thumb buttons. Um, the forward thumb button I use for firing my missile once it's locked, and then my back then my down mouse button or the rear mouse button is my pitch up so that while I'm maneuvering with my mouse and I'm rolling I can pitch up and adjust as needed with my mouse button rather than trying to reach for uh, another button with one of my pinky or index or ring fingers um, it just made it easier for me uh, everyone has their preference I've haven't really used my pitch my pitch down for negative G's I typically just invert or roll over and go the other way, or I'll move my mouse just a little bit to apply that negative G. It's kind of a preference thing. Getting into our mechanization, here there is wing sweep for fixed or sweep wing aircraft like the MiGs and the F-14s and the Tornado that's just been added. You can set these uh, to what you prefer. Here I've done Alt W and Alt S, so kind of tying in with my throttle just to know throttle up. W up so I can open and close my wings and there is um, a mode so where you have automatic control of your wings and manual control or semi-manual control of the wings so I do have another video where I talk about 
setting it into the manual mode, adjusting your wing sweep all the way out to zero to force them out. And then you can just toggle this mode, Alt-1 for me. And basically when you're into a turn fight or a dog fight, you're going to immediately toggle that on to force your wings out, and then that gives you that extra bit of uh, turning ability. It's going to slow you down, but it'll give you, you that full amount of wings. My flaps, this is a typical default flap button, um, and it only goes between fully up and the next mode down. If you want them all the way down, for example, to landing, uh, you can set another key here. I've set my X key since it's close to my, um, my middle finger where I can quickly toggle and press X in the middle of a dogfight. It's really hard to find, you know, the bracket key when you're trying to control and roll and dodge and everything, especially in a, in an arcade match. Air brake is close. It's H. Landing gear is G. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, the drag shoot, I don't manually in, in enable this. It automatically deploys if the aircraft is, in, is capable of it. Um, I, and then the weaponry. Uh, the small and large caliber guns, I've just fired, set everything to my, my main left mouse button. You want to have that easy. Um, you can set them to multiple buttons, but when you're in a dogfight, I want everything available. So that's what I typically do. I haven't set my jettison here. Um, I probably need to set that up now that we have drop tanks. Drop additional fuel tank, I need to set this up. Again, you want to think about what's a, a convenient control scheme here so that you're not hunting for it in the middle of trying to dodge a missile or something else. So, Guided bombs, I haven't really utilized any of the guided bombs, so I haven't even set these up yet. Uh, it's kind of up to you. Um, like I showed you or I mentioned earlier, fire countermeasures is S for me. Uh, periodic countermeasures release here, you can set that to where... Um, It'll start releasing them in a, in a series uh, automatically if you toggle it on. Again, there's another one where countermeasures are slave to, I guess, your radar warning or warning receiver, missile warning receiver, I think that's what it's called. Uh, that's actually a good idea. Um, I didn't think of doing that, but typically I'm, I'm looking around me most of the time, and I try to manually control, especially for some of the aircraft that have a very limited amount of flares. I don't want all of them to completely fire off as soon as someone is locked on to me uh, because then um, all they have to do is lock you on the whole time until all your flares are depleted until the reload or the countdown and then you're a sitting duck for missiles so that's, that's kind of a trade-off to decide on. Um, adjusting your radar modes here um, Alt R is to basically turn your radar on and off um, or you can use the uh, on-screen key the mechanization key which is the Y button I typically just do it from there. Um, you can use a shortcut if you want. Um, I haven't really been utilizing radar that much beyond setting the beyond visual range, and I use the on-screen uh, overlay to do that. So I think we've covered most of that. We've covered movement mechanization and weaponry. So um, camera control. Uh, your free look should be your C button, and uh, you're going to be using this a lot. I'm going to show you that very shortly. You want to be very familiar with looking around you all at all times when you're in a battle. And I'm going to show you that now, jumping into a match. We're doing 11.3 Air Arcade. And if you're not familiar with the interface, you can select here their game type, or Air Arcade or Air Realistic. And you can choose your servers as well, depending on your location. Uh, I turned all of them on just so I can get the max amount of uh, players in a battle. There's already 18 here waiting for battle in the queue. Uh, sometimes this number is really low, sometimes it's down to like 8 or 10, and that makes it a little bit harder to find a match. Uh, it just depends on the time of day. Typically, uh, during the day, you can get into a match. Uh, here, I guess, the matchmaker has found some people, I think at least 10 of them, into a game, and it, hence it dropped down to 8. So we're going to wait now for the next uh, queue to line up. So in the meantime, I want to go ahead and cover uh, some of the map types. Um, and what I'll do is I'll um, just kind of describe them and hopefully I can actually uh, put a couple of graphics in as well. But there's going to be typically, I believe there's um, three main types of map types that, you, that you're going to play in Air Arcade. There's going to be a domination, which is a capture the, capture the airfield type, usually with an A, B, and C airfield. And the team that hells at least two of them will bleed the other the other team out of their tickets. 
Uh, there is a rare map with just one airfield in the middle. It's kind of a larger map, so you have to fly in, and there's ground vehicles on each team that will drive over to the airfield. Now, you want to be aware of these airfields. Um, if your team has lost a lot of its tanks to, due to the other team's bombing, then you are going to be at a disadvantage because if the other team has all of their tanks and they are on the airfield, you are unable to capture that airfield until the bombs have been removed, until the tanks have been removed via bombing or you know strafing them. And we have actually seen in some games where the tanks will actually, if there's enough of them on the field, they'll automatically capture it for their team. So while Going for ground targets isn't necessarily the primary objective of a of a of a fight in the air. Uh, it can change the uh, the the momentum of the team because you will have that additional bleed uh, that's slowing you down. So in this match, you saw that thumbnail. This is a domination game, and there's only two. So there's either the three three airfields, two airfields, or a single airfield for domination types, and you have. Um, the standard uh, vehicles that spawn on each team for each side. So before I even jump into the game, I typically want to see what I'm up against, uh, what type of aircraft I'm, I'm up against. Usually it's going to be in top tier, it's going to be a combination of, of basically MiGs and F5s, F14s, and obviously the Tornadoes because people have unlocked them, and F16s. So with that in mind, we're going to jump in uh, I typically use my all aspect R60Ms here. I'm going to turn my radar off. I don't need my radar in this type of a game mode because I'm not using radar missiles. I'm using heat seekers. And I do see this F14's missiles coming in here. I'm going to flare. And we're just getting out of range here. Here comes another missile here. And he's going to try and get guns on. He got my elevator just barely, and he has that periodic flare dispensing there. I'm going to try to lead ahead of where he's flying. Oh, no, I'm not. He's going to try, but unfortunately I got taken out. And this is unfortunately what top tier is going to be like. Um, we'll come in with my other MiG-23. And I'm just, I do these videos in one hot take. I don't cherry pick content. Um, I just do my voiceover as the game is progressing. So let's try to get back in and try this again. I do see a Harrier over here with a missile coming in here. I'm going to try to lock on here. That should no, nope, just a little short. We're going to try and get back on target here. And you can shoot a little bit off bore with your R60. So here I, I shot it a little off bore and we were able to get him there. I'm looking behind me again because that's what happened. Uh, again, same, <laughs> like I said. You want to be aware of where they are. Uh, again, unfortunately, he got me again. We'll fly with our MiG-21. And this is going to be a, a common theme here with um, with top tier. As soon as you think you're okay, someone else has a, a bearing on you with a missile and you know, you're not going to be able to survive. Just barely missed with my gun there. Get our teammate got him. Need to see where that. Okay, there's another MiG 23 here. Excellent. And um, if you haven't, if you've seen players that have a tag in front of their names, uh, they're part of a squadron. Uh, and it's basically one of the mechanics that's in the game. Um, squadrons do help uh, some cohesiveness for teams at top tier. Uh, versus being on a team with a bunch of random players that, you know, may not, may or may not do anything. So, again, off board here, and we got him because the missile is not behind him, but more in front of him. So that way, it'll actually follow and chase him without hopefully seeing the flares. The seeker won't see the flares. Yeah, I see an F-16 coming in here, and I see a missile coming in. I hit my landing flaps to try to get some turning. I'm going to burn all my speed, unfortunately. But I do want to try to lead again off bore here ahead of him. But I do see that his back is towards me now. So if I was to have fired a missile here, he probably would have flared off. 
plus there's an enemy, uh, our teammate on him as well. So we'll let him, he's going to probably reset. And re by reset, I mean he's going to head back to his side of the map and probably let his missiles respawn or any other thing that's been depleted respawn. Okay, ended up getting taken out by the uh, GR7 Harrier. There's a MiG-29 up high that's uh, going after our team there. I'm going to try to help them, but we were unable to land. They had a good job of landing, and unfortunately, that's how that match unfolded. But as you can see, I was using my free look key a lot through the match. I'm also positioning where my missile launch is going to be. With the R60, it's going to take a kind of a, a short path and arc in. We're going to try this again. Let's see what kind of match we get. We got into another game pretty quickly here. So some people say top tier takes forever in Air Arcade to match up. It just depends on the time of day. Um, here we we're able to get in pretty fast. This is a ground strike game. So here it's basically ground targets and um, individual bases that need to be bombed out. Again, we're going to see who's spawning in here. Um, there's a couple of F-14s, so I'm going to be wary of those long beyond visual range missiles. There's an F-4E Phantom, a couple of Phantoms, um, a mix of some MiGs. Uh, this Thunder Chief here is going to be going for bases probably, so we need to be aware of that. And some MiG-29. This is going to be a tough game because they have a pretty stacked team of some good aircraft. Our team as well is, is lined up pretty well. I got another squad mate on my team in this game, which is good. So let's see how it, how it goes. So I'm taking my standard countermeasures. I'm going to use um, mixed here uh, so that we can try to uh, have a countermeasure to those radar missiles that the um, F-14 is going to have. This Thunder Chief is probably going to end up taking out this base. Um, by the time we fly close enough, that base is already toast. There we go. Missile coming in. Teammate got him already. I see a missile here. A Crusader there. Okay, so he's, he's able to loop that way and he's chasing our teammate there. Um, it's going to be tough to get the missile off. Both of those had come in this way. And I see that, that MiG-23 up high. If we can sneak up behind him, our, our radar has been disabled. So I'm hoping he's not going to be aware of that. Here we go. I don't know if he's going to see that. Yeah. I didn't flare it early enough for that F-14, unfortunately. So probably poor management. I was also going over to kind of their side of the map. We'll come back in again and try that again. And that was the F-105 pilot that now has his F-14 up. Okay. So here, F-14 is getting in range. Okay, he's dead. Um, MiG-29 here. We're pre-flaring here. He's dead. F-4C, they don't have countermeasures, so I know that he's not going to be able to dodge uh, whatever's fired at him. So here comes our missile. But in the head-on, he ended up getting killed. And we burned through our flares really quickly because the MiG-23M has a very limited amount of countermeasures here. But we do need to get rid of these, uh, these missile lobbing planes. And our team is doing a good job of focusing on those. And you see, I'm looking behind me every chance I get because... Even when you think you've seen the missile, the icon will eventually vanish when it runs out of fuel, and then it's not going to render, and you're going to end up getting killed. So we're going to reset. I'm going to go back to my side of the map here. Our flares have come back. See, we only have six flares and six chaff, so you can burn through them pretty much just through one or two missiles that are coming off onto you. There's two enemies here. I'm going to see if I can try to go for this Harrier. Off bore there. Nope, that didn't connect. There's the F8. He's also firing his flares. 
I'm also pre-flaring because I don't know where that MiG-23 is above me. There he is. I see a missile coming in there. It's actually the MiG-29 up high, and I see saw that F5 fire a missile on me. Okay, that's one's dead. And we're going to go for this F5 here. And we got taken out by the F5. So we'll go for the S. Actually, we'll use our MiG-21 next, and then we'll use the. I'm usually basically using everything that has all aspects. Okay. There's a MiG-23 here. Oh, he crashed into the ground. Okay. That was a, a waste of an aircraft by that pilot. I see an F4J here, and he's smart. He's pre-flaring pretty much the whole time. And let's see if this will go. No, he turned directions there. And he ended up getting hit. And MiG-23 cleaned me up. Not the best uh, game, but like I said, this is not about cherry picking. It's just about walking through what's I'm thinking of as I'm going through it. Again, we're on our side. Of, we're close to our spawn. I don't like normally hiding behind our spawn. I like to be more towards the middle. Our, our anti-aircraft should be uh, lighting him up here. job by our teammate. We are bleeding out some tickets here. Um, that F-105 did take some bases out and some ground targets have been taken out as well. Somebody's locking me up. My warning receiver is going off. It's my teammate's radar. Here goes our off war shot. We missed. is getting hit. I do see some uh, some looks like particles were coming off of his aircraft. That's usually the animation for when you get hit. Yeah, there he's done. Good job by our F-16. And that F-7F is the one that's hitting some ground targets here. So we're going to try to get a missile lock on a prop. Yeah, possible. Got to get close. There it goes. And he's done. I see a MiG-23 there. And he's three kilometers out. He's closing in fast. I want to position myself here knowing where he is here. There he is. We missed each other there. And there's another one coming in there. 27 and unfortunately too close to the mountain. I was trying to use the mountain to help me, but not good enough. So we will come back in with our SU 25. We're probably going to lose. I mean, we're so far behind with ground targets. Uh, I don't know if we can really do much. I, mean, I would fly my MiG 27 in and bomb, but it's so far into their area that I'll probably get slapped by some missiles. So. So I'm keeping an eye on my warning receiver here, just so that I'm aware of possibly needing to pre-flare. Two of ours are on the F-14, he's ignited. 
And another MiG-23 is firing down upon our team here. Unfortunately, that missed. F-104 shouldn't be able to dodge that. Yeah, no way he's going to dodge that. And I see the MiG-23 here. Fortunately, a missile did get me, so I'm... I'm having trouble uh, keeping control when I loop. It's a bit tough here. One of my elevators is black on the left side, so... I'm going to pre-flare here, knowing that that MiG-23 might try to lock me on. I do see that 104 as well. See an F5 coming in here. Got him. And my elevator is completely toast here. I don't think I can do much to control. This SU-25 is really strong. Look, I've taken like three missiles. And three of five, pretty bad. It is what it is, uh, not the best. Okay, next thing, we're going to come in with our MiG-19. Uh, there's only a little bit of game left, so we'll finish off with this. Again, took my radar off. I don't need it. I don't want unnecessary countermeasures going off. People differ on what they prefer, but I just don't like it. I mean, this plane is a bit tough to use now with the meta that it is, with as many missile-carrying planes as there are and no countermeasures. Uh, it's a bit challenging to evade everything. It's going to require even more situational awareness to try and dodge things. We're hanging on by a thread here. I do see this MiG-23 here. Barely hit me there. That was close. We're in a rape fight against a MiG-23. That F-100 is extremely slow with that maneuver here, so I'm going to try and... Nope, I'm not. The A-10 got me. I was going to try to go for the F-100, but again, I wasn't fully aware. So I'm making the mistakes that I'm telling you not to make, but uh, that's the end of that game. Um, I hope this was helpful. I may put another one up with a little bit better examples, but... Um, we stayed alive a decent amount. Um... Let's see how much we lost in that game. If we look at our battle, we lost 23k. So again, like I said, if you lose a game, the rewards have been nerfed a lot to where you pretty much have to win and you have to do a lot of work in the game to actually uh, make a profit, especially for Air Arcade. Maybe Real Battles might give you a little bit better forgiveness for that. But uh, I'll stop the recording here and I'll put another one up since this is already getting kind of long and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you.